Hey everybody, Greg from Power Planner. I first of all want to thank you uh, for investing in our family business uh, and also investing in yourself to make gardening landscaping uh, a lot easier. Uh, this will be the single most important video that you will watch of Power Planner. This entire video is going to be on safety uh, because most of all safety is the most important thing. Uh, so we want to make sure everybody gets off to the right start. So the first thing is whatever drill you use, read the instruction manual for your drill. You can be an expert carpenter, you can be an expert power tool user. Spend a few minutes and read it. Uh, this is not the pr time to be prideful and know that you know everything there is about power tools. Uh, I still to this day glance through the manual just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So spend some time, read the manual. Then we're going to talk about drills. The drill that we sell is a DeWalt DCD996. The 996 metal chuck has a side handle, three speeds, uh, and it also has a safety clutch. So that's why we sell it. In our eyes, it's one of the best on the market, uh, and it's very, very well built. Now, side handle is not a total necessity. Uh, so if your drill does not have a side handle, you're still safe, and we'll worry about that and talking about how to do that here later on. But this drill comes with a side handle, so we're gonna use it with that side handle installed. Most people when they install a side handle will have it off to the side like this. Some people will choose to put it actually like this so they can drill holes straight down. Choice is yours, it's user comfort. Now, some people might go out and say, well, I don't have a cordless battery operated drill, Greg. My drill is corded. Power planner and most people would highly recommend you not use a corded drill with our augers. And the reason for that is most corded drills do not have any of the safety features of a clutch, speed control, and things like that. So if it catches or when it catches on something, that's when you can really torque your wrist and get injured. So cordless battery operated drills, uh, and then make sure you read the manual. Now when you get ready to set this up, very first thing I want you to do is pay attention right up here. On this particular model, there are three uh, numbers, one, two, and three. Your drill might have one and two. Your brand or model might have high and low. On this one, it ships on three, which is high speed. Using your auger, we always want to run on low speed. So we want to move that down to number one. Number one is low speed, highest amount of torque or twist force, which you want for augering soil. The other thing we always want to do when we do this is start out with your clutch setting on number one, which is the lowest clutch setting uh, or torque setting, meaning it's not going to do anything in the earth. I'll show you in a moment, but it's how you start safe and you work your way up to figure out what you can withstand. To install your power planner, you always make sure 100% the battery is out. The reason for that is, is you don't want to accidentally hit this trigger and accidentally hit that trigger and have this spin. So what you do on this particular drill is you're going to put your power planner in and you're going to turn this clutch by hand and you'll hear it click and then you just give it a big click like this and when it quits clicking you're done. That's how this DeWalt model works. Other drill models and again it goes into reading the manual, other model of drills there might be other steps. For instance, you tighten it and you might click backwards one click. This model you don't, you just turn it until it quits clicking. Bigger drills and more heavy duty industrial drills will have this kind of chuck, which is called a keyed chuck. And right down here, this is like learning to ride your bike to get that out. How this one works is there's three different uh, holes in the chuck. So if you take your larger size power planter, you put that in there and you'll tighten this up by hand. And again, make sure the battery is out. And then you take your, what's called the chuck key, and you put it in this hole and you tighten it. And that's not good enough. A lot of people tighten one spot. Tighten that one, rotate it, tighten that spot, and then go back and do this one. Now, if you wanna be extra sure that this is properly tightened, I always recommend you go back and do it one more time, kind of like you would lug nuts on a car. So tighten it there, tighten it here, and tighten it there. 
And then you can put your chuck key back in so you don't lose it. And at this point, you can now slide your battery in and you're ready to go. Now this particular drill, being a DCD-130, has what's called an E-clutch. So compared to the 996, there is no clutch setting to set on this bigger drill. This drill has a built-in clutch system, so when there's enough torque reached, it kicks out automatically. Meaning that if I drilled into this ground and I happen to hit something, it will stop, and there's a little red light up here where it says E-clutch, that will light up. The other thing you'll notice is this has a side handle as well, but unlike the 996 where it rotates um, around this collar, um, this one you have three choices. So you can put it on this side if that's how you're comfortable. You can stick it on this side if you're, that way is more comfortable for you. My personal preference on this bigger drill with our bigger bits, I like to put it right here straight out in line because then as I'm augering, I can go straight down on the auger. Um, so two different choices. This guy will work for small augers uh, all the way to big augers. This guy, we generally recommend the three to four inch diameter range. But the important thing is pay attention to uh, what clutch you have. Make sure your battery's out and safety as far as all your settings and slow speed. And most of all, read your manual. Once you have this part done, you get your battery and you click it in, just like this, okay? Now, we're on low speed, we're installed in tight, so now, because if I pull this trigger, it's gonna turn. We wanna make sure that our hands are clear of anything moving. Make sure the drill is in the forward direction. So on this one, there's an arrow right here, and it's pointing into the ground, which that is what we want. We want this drill to go into the ground. So that's forward, low speed. We're on the number one setting right here on the clutch. So if when I try to drill this hole, it's not gonna drill, okay? So we're gonna go, and it quits. And what that is, is that's saying, that's all the torque that number one has. At that point, because we can't drill a hole, turn it up a couple and move, a couple notches, so now we're on number three. And you'll see we went a little bit farther, but we still did not actually get a suitable hole drilled. So we'll move it up a couple more to say number five. And then it, it did, I've drilled a hole, but it also quit. So at this particular spot, where I'm basically in a clover field, uh, and also a combination of a driveway, number five, is adequate. I mean, I'm down four or five inches. So if I'm putting in perennials, annuals, things like that, uh, I'm deep enough. If you need to get deeper or your soil is harder, you can turn it up a couple more notches. And then you will feel when it starts to twist. The key is you want to make sure that you're on a number where it starts to twist, you're still comfortable, but then it kicks out. You'd never want to turn this all the way to what looks like a drill bit or what looks like a hammer. The numbers are the screwdriver settings, so the actual clutch will kick in. If you're on this mode here where the drill bit is or the hammer, this clutch will not engage. So if you hit something, it will twist, and that's how injuries can happen. So always make sure you're on a number, start low, work up to whatever your arm strength is and so you can get a hole drilled. Now when it goes to drilling, a lot of people think on one of these augers, you need to push as hard as you can into the ground. That simply is not the case. Let the auger and the drill do the work. So when I say that, what I'm doing is I kind of use a dabbing motion. Otherwise, you end up with an anchor. You don't want this thing to screw in. So kind of an up and down motion. And if you need a bigger hole, you can just kind of ream it out. And I'll show you now. And so what I've done now is I have a hole here that is probably four or five inches. I could easily put a quart pot in here. I could easily, if I had really bad soil, I've got room now to add some compost, uh, some peat moss, stuff like that. So a three inch auger, you can accomplish a five inch hole, a seven inch hole very, very easily. I wanna clarify one other thing that some people sometimes get confused with. 
power planter augers, whether you have a half inch hex or a 3 8 hex, when we say a 3 8 or a half inch hex, we're referring to that size drill chuck. So what that means is our augers are meant to fit into a chuck that tightens like one of these keyless ones or a keyed chuck like this. Our augers are in no way, shape, or form meant to fit or machined to fit into a socket or into an impact driver with a quick attach. So please, if you only have a quick attach uh, or if you have a socket of some sort, these augers are not meant to be attached in either fashion. They are meant to go into a tightening chuck called a Jacobs chuck, like this keyless chuck here or this key Jacobs chuck like this. Again, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all of your time um, and your investment in our company. And if you have questions, feel more than free to reach out to us. Uh, we're more than happy to walk you through this over the phone or via email. Uh, our website obviously is powerplanter.com. Uh, you can give the office a call. We're Monday through Friday, eight to four central time. And that number is 217-379-2614. Thanks everybody, stay safe out there.